video demo of uh, sticky ECMP or what other people call persistent load balancing and we're focusing on the NCS 5500 today. Uh, my name is Xander Thuges. I'm an engineer within the uh, Cisco SP routing group and I'm going to talk to you through this uh, load balancing demo for sticky ECMP. General standard load balancing, if we have a flow here, let's say the purple flow that goes from PE1 to P1 to P3 towards its destination and we have three equal cost multipass, let's say, between P1, P3, P1, P4, and P1, P2. It could so happen that if there is a link failing between P1 and P2 that is totally unrelated to our purple flow, that the load balancing will rehash this purple flow onto the green path to, uh, from P1 towards P4. This is caused by a rehashing functionality that resides inside the hardware, and let's look at that now. A flow that comes in, uh, a hash is being derived, and that hash maps to a particular bucket, which you see being drawn here, for example, with five buckets. So each flow in the system will map to one particular bucket. Now, let's say that if we have a five bucket or six buckets in this case, and we have three paths, then we have zero, one, two, and that sequence being repeated. So zero, one, two, zero, one, two, as you can see on the left hand side. Now, if for whatever reason path 1 fails, it means that we're supposedly affecting buckets 1 and 4. But what would happen with the rehashing is, is that we have a new path sequence that is 0, 2 right now, and that's got distributed over the buckets. So now we have a 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2 sequence. And as you can see on the right-hand side, in the standard load balancing, load balancing scenario, you see that bucket 1 of course it failed, so it needs to be rehashed in this case path 2. Same thing for bucket 4, that is getting path 0 assigned. But then buckets 2 and 3, that in the previous case were using path 2 and 0 respectively, are now being flipped around from 0 to 2. And that is what explains the previous uh, scenario that we saw on the, on the previous picture. Now, with this consistent load balancing or persistent load balancing or sticky ECMP or whatever we want to call it, what we do is, is we are not touching the buckets that are not uh, affected by this, by this path failure. We're only touching the buckets that have a path failure, so buckets 1 and 4. Load balancing. Let's say that if you have, in this case, four servers, they all share the same virtual IP, and they are advertising that virtual IP through BGP to a load balancing router. Now, in the, in the earlier, we saw that when a flow moves from one path to another, in this case, it means that a flow would move from one server to another. And that we kind of don't want to have happen, especially when it is TCP sessions based, because in this case, you know, like a TCP session will reset, since, in, for instance, server one may not know about the socket that server three had before. So here in this example, when we have the blue path going from the, from the user to our server four, and we have a failure on server number two, we don't necessarily want to rehash this user on, on, on a perfectly fine server four to be rehashed to server one as it will reset its TCP session. So sticky ECMP will prevent that from happening and only replace the server two sessions with one of the available servers. Now, the interesting thing is, is that um, one might say, why are we not doing that by default? The reason for that is, is that in normal ECMP cases, we're looking at a most equal distribution of flows over the available pass and try to get, in this case, a 25% split. With sticky ECMP, we might see some servers getting more sessions than others, depending on how distribution of the remaining flows goes. So it is not a scenario that you would want to use every time, all the time, but it is a perfect example of where this functionality of sticky ESMP would fit in this server load balancing. For this test setup, we have two routers, one 9K on the left and an NCS 5500 on the right. That will be our unit under test. Um, we have traffic being sourced from loop 169 on a 9K in VRF red, going towards the NCS 5500 and basically traffic going to 12.12.12.12, .12 which is found via these three VLAN sub-interfaces on the NCS 5500. All right, let's go start some traffic through VRF red towards the loop back of the remote device, sourced by loop 169. 
Uh, okay, let's see where the traffic is landing. We may need to wait, give it a little while. And here we see that we're effectively using VLAN 20, as that is the interface with, uh, with the packets. The other ones are silent. Now, if we are shutting down that um, path of VLAN 20, obviously the traffic is going to move to another interface. And it looks like VLAN 10 is the lucky one. VLAN 20 is dying off and VLAN 30 is the still silent interface. Now, if we are moving that back, then we should see the traffic slowly dying off. Yeah, on VLAN 10 and it is getting back to VLAN 20. As you can see, and this is the scenario that we want to prevent with sticky ECMP. So, all right. Let's look at our route policy. It is using a prefix set called sticky. So, show run prefix set sticky. All right. Okay. Now we're going to apply that uh, root policy towards the table policy of uh, the router BGP configuration. Okay, we have it successfully applied. Starting the traffic again. We'll see here that the uh, traffic is increasing already on VLAN 20, as you can see right here. If we look at the show set details uh, for this prefix, we see now here that the load distribution is marked consistent and it is using the uh, interfaces 0, 1 and 2. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go shut. Okay. We'll sh we should see it going back to VLAN 10 right here. We should see VLAN 20 slowly dying off. But VLAN 10 is increasing. Okay, now let's look at the show chef details one more time. We can see here that we still keep track of the bucket 1. Oop, and we have replaced that with uh, VLAN 10 for this uh, load sequence. And that's why you see this asterisk here, because we have uh, enabled the uh, consistent load balancing. So the flow still hits bucket number 1 or uh, hash 1 but it is now taking VLAN 10 is what we what we were seeing in the interface rate commands also now if I roll back the configuration VLAN 20 is coming back into service we have to wait for the BGP pairing to come back VLAN uh, 20 is back up we're gonna look at 10 so VLAN 10 is still carrying that traffic and VLAN ten, uh, 20 that we just enabled that used to uh, capture this traffic is still showing zero. Let's look at the show set first. You can see that uh, this is still the same to set to VLAN 10. So if we do a clear IP route 12 or 12 or 12 or 12, looking at SEF, you can now see that it's recovered to VLAN 20, which means that we should see slowly VLAN 10. It's going down slowly and we should see VLAN 20 picking up at the same time again, as you can see. So in this case, I use the, uh, or I chose the manual recovery option with the clear IP route. I can also choose to recover automatically so that when the path is getting re-enabled, I move the, the flows automatically back without any manual intervention. This is, there is no one size fits all answer here. We provide both options with manual or automatic recovery here. <coughs> Uh, sticky ECMP is a little bit resource intensive for the uh, forewarning information base or FIP manager. So we don't recommend to enable it for all prefixes. You can select which prefixes need to be marked sticky through RPL or root policy language. 
Um, the other part to that is, is that by default we are not doing rehashing as of what we were showing earlier through this demonstration. The way that links would be rehashed is, is when you're adding a new path that was unknown to the ECMP distribution before or when we're do, doing a clear route, which is what we demonstrated, or when you are configuring the auto recovery feature uh, via the command of Ceph consistent hashing auto recovery. Well, hey, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.